Did you ever think about how many times a day you have to say no to something? So it can be just an easy story. In the morning you're standing at the street and the light is red and you think by yourself, just cross the street. On the other side, you want to be a role model for all the small children. So you decide to just wait till it gets green. Good decision. You know, each person has his own challenges. There are some person, whenever it comes to lovely food, they cannot say no. Other person, when it comes to gambling, they have to try their luck. And the next person, whenever it comes to gossip, she always have the right stories. And even if a person is just at home, they are still just one click far away from the next hot dirty video. So temptation is something what is always around us and everyone has his own challenges. But now the big question is, does God temptate us? Well, that's a good one. Let us check out what does the Bible say about temptation. The good news is God is not temptating us. Much more, it is the devil. He was also the person who told Eve in the Garden Eden to eat from the fruit. So now we could say, okay, then we got the bad boy. It's the devil, but this will be too easy because sometimes it is even our own flesh what temptates us. So for example, whenever you go to McDonald's and you come out and you feel so bad because you got five Big Macs, then it was your own flesh and not the devil who was using you to eat so many burgers. And yes, the devil is a bad person and he's trying to get us down. So we also have to see and realize there are both things. There is on one side our flesh what is temptating us, but on the other side there is also the devil and he's also trying to get us down. There are two amazing promises from God. First of all, he won't allow the Satan to temptate you stronger than whatever you can handle. And it will be always like this, that God shows you a way to exit out of the temptation. And the next thing is whenever we went through the temptation that God promised us that we will get the chrome of life. And right now I want to share with you six different strategies what helps us going through temptation, what makes us stronger in this time and come out full of victory. Starting with the first strategy, the running strategy. This strategy is originated in the old Egypt. There was a boy, his name was Joseph, and he was living as a slave in a big house and his landlord, his name was Potiphar, and he gave him everything to manage everything. But there was only one thing that was not allowed for him to touch his lovely wife. But this lovely wife, she fell in love in Joseph and she wanted to have some quality time with Joseph. But when Joseph realized this, and he came into this temptation, then he just took his legs and he started to run away from her so that this sin couldn't took him down. And whenever you come in situation, for example, there are some friends, they are always like gossiping and talking bad things. Whenever you hear them, they're starting some stuff, just say, hey, sorry, I have to leave. Just go somewhere else, but don't stay there where the sin is. When you realize in this area there is a temptation, just go and run away. The second one, the throw away strategy. Whenever your eyes seduce you, then take it out and throw it away. What does Jesus want to tell us with this? So whenever you have stuff in your life and you cannot handle it, just throw it away. If you cannot handle your social media because you're spending like every day four or five hours with it, then just cancel it and just delete it. And when you are watching TV like crazy, then just take your TV, throw it away. But please take care of your eyes. Don't kill them, okay? Let's go to the third strategy. High hypothesis, hypothesis, high hypothesis. The hypothesis strategy. Maybe you ask yourself, Basim, it is always getting now more and more complicated and, and even I don't know if I'm still spelling these words right. So what is with this strategy? 
So it is more about to think what will happen if I am doing this right now, what will happen maybe in the future. So for example, I love to do this with my children. My daughter, she loves eating sweets, so candies, all the stuff, chocolate, and sometimes I say, sweetheart, is really enough what you got? And if she don't want to stop, then I can also tell her, come on, let us have a look in Google how small, thick girls look. And when she sees the picture, she says, oh my God. And then she realizes, I should better stop eating candies. And the same thing with my son. He is not into teeth brushing. You don't want to brush your teeth? No problem. Come on, let us have a look how bad teeth will look after a while. And, and after such pictures, they realize which results such behavior can have. And the same thing is with our relationship to God. God is not want to freak us out or want to give us fear or something like this, but we still have to be clear about consequence. If we will miss it up totally and we will lose our eternal life, what this will mean. And this is for me always a little bit like there is a fear of God because I know God is also a holy God and he is the person who not only can damage my body but also my spirit. So therefore I have to be clear about everything what I'm doing that it has consequence and results on this earth but also for my future and this I don't want to mess up. The delete strategy. Did you realize that the most of the sin it always start with one small idea in our head? I love 2010. There was this movie in the cinema, Inception, and it was all about putting an idea in the head of one person and controlling this person. Once I were challenging my youth group with a question, if everyone from you could choose a superpower like heroes could, which one would you choose? So everyone started to choose something to can, I can fly, I have the power like Magneto, power over water, whatever. And in the end I said, and now I'm choosing. So I said, I'm choosing that I can control all your minds because then I got all the superpowers. And you know what? Our mind is so important because whoever controls it, he will control you. Back now to the delete strategy. Just picture you have your email account or your messenger and day for day there are a lot of messages coming in and you always see the subjects and now you can decide are you opening it or are you deleting it without having a look on it? Because you know, hey, this is a bad thing. And exactly the same thing is with our mind. Whenever bad ideas comes in your head, just delete them from the first moment because whenever you will open them, they will grow in you and then it will get so hard for you to get rid of them. The Bible tells us that we shall wear every day the helm of our salvation, what save us and take care of all our minds and don't be attacked from the ideas of the devil. Now I want to speak with you about the sword strategy. Whenever the Bible speak about the sword, it means the word of God. So whenever you get in a temptation and the devil attack you, you can take out the word of God and protect yourself. The best example how this works showed us Jesus. So when he went to the desert and he were fasting for 40 days, the Bible says afterward he got hungry. I totally understand this. And then the devil came when he saw that Jesus he is hungry and he is weak. And he were asking Jesus and said, hey Jesus, just take this stone and turn it to a bread. But then Jesus returns to the devil and he used the word of God and he says, a man shall not live from bread alone, but from each word what comes of the mouth of God. And then the devil, he realized, oh, with food it's not working. So he tries something different. He shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And he say, hey, see Jesus, I will give you all these kingdoms. 
just bow down and worship me. But then Jesus answers, worship the Lord your God and Savior alone. And the devil realized, oh, I cannot break Jesus, but maybe I got an idea if I'm using now the word of God. So he takes him and he put him on the roof of the temple and he tells him, Jesus, see, it is written in the scripture, you can jump down and then God will send his angel and they will take care of you so that your feet won't bump again any stones. And then the devil realized, no way, I cannot break through because Jesus really knows to each situation the right scripture from the Bible. And this is exact when we know the word of God and we use it whenever temptation comes, it makes us strong because we realize all the promises and everything what is written in the word of God. And let us look now to the next strategy. And now to my last strategy, the prevention strategy. So the first five strategies, they were all like, okay, there comes a temptation and then you have to act. But this one, it is more like preparing ourselves to be strong and ready whenever something has come. Let me share with you the story about Jesus last evening. So he went with his disciples to the Garden Gethsemane and there he took his time and he started to pray. God, not my will shall happen in this situation. It is all about your will shall be done. And then he teaches one more time his disciples. So he tells them, Watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. So that means for us, we always have to watch and be clear because the devil always want to bring us to fall. And the next thing is we have to pray that God makes us strong, that whenever attack comes, we are strong and we can handle it. Wow, we are almost in the end of this video and now you are so excited to say, yeah, now I have all the strategies to fight against the devil. But let me be honest to you, you and I, we will still fall down from time to time because the devil is always attacking us. But we are getting stronger from day to day. And whenever you and I, we fall down, then it is important that we don't lie a long time on the floor and cry and maybe be angry about ourselves, but much more from the first moment, take the mercy of Jesus and stand up again. We don't have the time to wait on the floor but much more we shall stand up and hit back the devil whatever he's doing to us and now I just wish you have a really great time with your mentor and you have a really good discussion see you for the next video bye Thank you.